professor of psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin Medical School, giving my 29th, come on in, Andy, of 36 lectures. In fact, we have a chair for you. Today's lecture is called Everyday American Tragedies. Quinamed gets on the altar of war and love. Many believe in the stars. Take Quinamed, the son of our Dardanian astrologer, who disregarded what his father said and came to Troy in a taxi. Gone. Gone on the altar of war and love. So opens the fifth of five hour five hour long plays or accounts of the Iliad of Homer by Christopher Logue. Quinamed made a cold call. This alludes to every American salesman. Also making uninvited calls for sales. Hardly a chance to make good on those offers. I will translate each of these five reversals in Logue's Homer into our American tragedies, our own, with suggestions from my friend Mike Moran. Think here of Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. Aristotle recognized that the problem with, what is, it, what is this plot, by the way, of, tra of tragedy? Aristotle um, uh, recognized the problem and what it was. And he said, basically, that tragedy, the best tragedies have reversal and recognition, and recognition of the reversal. A reversal is a change to the opposite in the actions being performed. Recognition, as the first term, as the term indicates, is a change from ignorance to knowledge. In other words, the plot of tragedy opens up a first line of sight to what actually is about to happen. Something that one had faith in all of a sudden is reversing itself and will be terrible. Only we're very weak at doing this now. Uh, compared to Aristotle's Athenians in 325 BC, or Dante's readers in 1300, or Shakespeare's playgoers in 1600, Christopher Logue now gives us another chance to improve ourselves in 2012. I mean, I, I think this is what psychiatry is about. People, people had faith in something, and then it collapses. So I'll now give you five examples from the Iliad. Right now, near Hyacinth, the son of Hyacinth, a Greek of able to quarry slate, throw a fair pot, and decorate it, he chose to follow Agamemnon, still upridge, still saying, ours by dark, he means Troy. While Hyacinth stood alone in the dispersal, awed by Hector's speed, by Hector's light, as Hector jumped his sword that caught the light into his other hand, leant out across the tray side, the Troy side wheel, and wishing him the very best of luck, decapitated Hyacinth as they passed. Think here, remarkable to me, just what Aristotle pointed out, the tranquil beauty of the apparent situation with an ironic politeness from Hector to Hyacinth and suddenly catastrophic and casual reversal and recognition of the true situation. Think here of all those boys who are deer in the headlights and girls in our organizational life. Cold Calls, that's the name of this version of Logue of one of the one hour plays, moves me like this with many, many, many more of these. Now I'll give you um, one that um, brings out the, the more of this casualness of, of the way things happen, like just happen, which is something we need to know about. Lord Teucer's archers hidden in the grass. Now the Trojans come on. Down came their points, out came their battle cry, and our cool Mr. Five by Five called up, and up we got and sent our arrows into them that made them pirouette, topple back down the rise, leaving their dead for
for some of us to strip and some the most to pause, to point, to plant a third, fourth, fourth volley into their naked backs. Pure joy. Think here of Lord Tusser, as many of our ruthless CEOs, so quick as Tusser to mow down our 47%. Second, there are the reversals made over and over again by the whimsical female goddesses. So maybe we have several here. This is something else we need to know about. Huntress, Lord Panda prays. Bright ankled god of nets and lines, of tangled mountains and of dark cascades. But Artemis was bored with him and let him rise still praying hard into the downflight of the javelin Diomed aired er, at Prince Aeneas. Think of here, here of all the bored beauties among us who are so quick to let a man be dispatched. Third, the reversals in the opposite direction, from casual and even offhand killing to grace. Here's one after Diomed and Hector have slammed by each other in a first pass, and Hector comes by for a second. This is the last passage I'm going to give you. What kept you, Prince, Diomed offered as they came abreast. You went for a refreshing towel and threw his axe that toppled through the air. And oh, Hector, my Hector, as you thought, if heaven helps me, helps me, heaven shows it loves the best, parted your lutey's mesh and smashed into his heart. What did you say as God called you to your death, dear lutey? My prince, I leave you driverless. And put the reins into Hector's hands and fled into oblivion. Think here of those with grace and courage and nobility that serve us. Now, we jump 4,000 years to, to the everyday American tragedies. Our business, this is psychiatry. The first the dream of, of the author about being backed up on a goal line. I've been watching a little UW football these days. <laughs> And uh, also, it's, it's simultaneously in the dream, I became backed up on the beach at Troy. I was simultaneously in both places. You can see why I have been, right? That's where I have been. I dreamed on a Saturday night into Sunday morning at 4 a.m. All my best dreams occur at 4 a.m. Uh, as I was preparing this lecture, you know, my instrument says, uh-oh, Gustafson, you know, watch out. And uh, the, there's a context for it, too. Uh, Brian Baldwin and I have been talking a lot about the Latka scenario and, and uh, The Thrills and Regressions is a great book by Michael Ballin. And what Ballin says about our core motivations is that we're built for two kinds of thrills. Fits perfectly with the Latka scenario, which is one is to break out in exploration away from home, to dare to get away from Mother Earth, right? Do, ever, do children ever do that? Yes. And to dive back into our burrow just ahead of the, of the predators, right? That's, the other, that's another thrilling thing. Children, two-year-old children play this all the time, right? Now I go up, now I leap back, right? They're practicing what hopefully you'll get to do the rest of your life, is have thrills. And, and then I said to Brian recently that this was, in, this was very strongly selected by something you don't know, which is called the great breakout of Homo sapiens from Central Africa. Less than 1,000 survivors of the human race were in Central Africa 90,000 years ago because of an incredible drought. But then the, the rains came, and the survivors began this leapfrogging from, and took over the whole world between 90,000 and 70,000 years ago. In other words, there was frontier after frontier. That's why, you see, that's why football is such a fascinating game for the American public. We're in a frontier country. We're on one of the last frontiers. And, and breaking out, you know, breaking, those are the thrills of football. Breaking out and diving to safety, right? All right, now we'll go to the whiteboard. 
to f follow this, this stream. Ed, you can do that. Um, the plot of this dream it seemed to me very simple at first. I was among many football players backed up on their own goal line with the ball, that's that, that red X is me, into an end zone with a concrete bunker. Susan's always asking me every morning, well, what happened last night, Dr. Gustafson? <laughs> well, this happened not so long ago. In, our, in other words, our backs were against this concrete wall there, then that brownish orange. Many of us were arguing about what step to take. It was extremely uncomfortable because we couldn't extend our limbs. It's hard to throw passes when you can't stand up straight, right, or do much of anything. And, um, and we were arguing, and, and, and finally I said, we've got to give someone a chance to, to run a series of plays or we'll never, get out of the, we'll never get out of this place. And they said, okay, Gustafson, you're so smart, you do it. And um, so I, and I, I knew my orders had to be extremely simple in this primitive situation. You know, in that kind of situation, if you barge straight into the line in your own goal line, very dangerous because they, that's the one thing that they'll be there for in football. I simply told, told the left end there to cross over to the right and the right end to cross over to the left. This had the virtue of opening up the field. Later, I was thinking about farther up the field, you know, if we ever got there, to, to Troy or Paris, right? And I thought, I, I'm not dealing with that. If we, I can get myself out, out of this goal line, I'll be lucky. Now, let's come back and I'll conclude the lecture. Now, what has this got to do with our work? Okay, you'll, you're about to find out. I always come to this, James. You're, you're always waiting. Now, only when I woke up did I think, um, that the architecture of the football field was the same as that for the Greeks in the most desperate moment of, of the war. I mean, they literally were backed up to their boats at a certain point. And Achilles had not, had not entered the, had not entered. He refused. Oh, that's such a great scene in Christopher Logue. Now, my dream discovers I find myself in the same position. I have to start from scratch on our goal line when I'm given the chance to lead. I do not bet on pushing straight ahead. Rather, I bet on locating two lines of sight. Also, I decline to do anything about what goes on farther up the field. As Monica would say, so it goes. I do not mean to be heartless. I mean to be quite objective, like Logue, about Quinnamed, who came to Troy in a taxi, disregarding his father. Take, for example, and here we come down to it, clinically. Uh, this is another Quinnamed uh, who I saw. I've seen countless times, and, but it will stand for a whole series of these, of these men. Always having had a temper and a determination to try harder than anyone, now he's having sex with a woman who gets on him every two minutes for not doing things right, and now he cannot decline to marry her because she might hurt herself. Every day and night builds up rage the moment she starts in back upon him, and he cannot allow himself to get away. In the, in the apartment, in the laundry, in the car, in other words, he's at his own goal line. He's backed up on the beach at Troy. He has nowhere, nowhere to move. This is a very dangerous place that, that a man lets himself get into. But I'm there, you know, I'm there with him. He is truly backed into his own goal line at Troy. I take the history of how he got into this explosive situation, and I take note that he has but one play that will work. He will have to get out of the apartment, out of the laundry, out of the car, so soon as she's as he starts to sweat about being pushed to the wall. He triumphantly tells me how he did it once in this, cons in this consultation. I say to him, if you ever hope to try again to involve yourself with a woman, you might want to practice this play from your own goal line a few thousand times. For you will soon find yourself sweating on the verge of exploding again. Thank you.